Hello, hope you're having a good day so far today. Today we are going to be talking about section 3-3 and we're going to be talking about proofs with some parallel lines. So we have talked about special names of angles. So we talked about these angles right here, this angle and this angle are vertical. We've talked about angle 1 and 2 being corresponding. We've talked about this angle um, 3 and let's go with 4 over here. 3 and 4 being alternate exterior angles. And 5 and 2, we've talked about those being alternate interior angles. We've talked about 2 and 4 being a linear pair. And we've talked about 6 and 2 being consecutive interiors. So 6 and 2, remember their sum is 180 degrees. The linear pair 2 and 4 are also 180 degrees, but everything else is congruent to the other one. So just a refresher quick on some of those names. All right, so the last section 3-2 we talked about if we have two parallel lines so we are telling you without a doubt those two lines are parallel and they are cut by a transversal then we can say that our conclusion could be same side interior are supplementary so one and two same side interior are supplementary we talked about corresponding if we put four and five, four and five corresponding angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent, are one and five. And alternate exterior angles, four and six, are alternate interior. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. So what happened here is our P that had to have happened is that you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Well, what if you say the converse? Can you say the converse like what we did back in chapter two? I know we're only on three, three, but the converse. So if we switch the P, the if, and the then, if we make this the if, and this the then. So if you have same side interior angles are supplementary, if one and two are supplementary, what can we now conclude about line L and line M? And they must be two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So if we start with if corresponding angles are congruent, then what can we conclude? two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So what do you guys think? Are these converses true or false? Does it work both forward and backward? And yes, it does work both forward and backward. So do you remember what those were called? And those are called biconditionals. And remember, if they are true, both forward and backward, then this is your very definition. Okay, so we have the corresponding angle converse. So this is doing the converse. If two parallel lines I are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent. So if corresponding angles are congruent, what can we now conclude? The lines must be parallel. So they're just starting with two lines. They started with J and K and they're saying they're cut by a transversal. And if we get corresponding angles congruent, then they're telling you we can go one step further and we can say that J must now be parallel to K. That is the converse of corresponding angles. Now they happen to write corresponding angles converse. I oftentimes write the converse first. So I'll say converse of corresponding angles. Okay, so I put the converse first, emphasizing the converse, and then we go on. All right, so you may want to just stop right here. And again, I say the converse first, converse of alternate interior. Do you have to write all three of these? No, just remember they're all the same thing. If 
we have alternate interior angles congruent, then the lines are parallel. If alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. If consecutive angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So these are all the converses of what we did in the last lesson. Okay, so here, right, if the lines are parallel, we just can say these corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior. But if it's the other way, if we are proving the lines are parallel, that's when you need this word converse there. All right, so here, can we conclude that M is parallel to N? Well, look at what we have here. We have corresponding angles. They are not congruent, and because they are not congruent, is M parallel to N? No. Why not? Corresponding angles not congruent. So therefore, we can conclude that they are not parallel. All right, are they parallel here? Well, what do we have? We have alternate exterior angles. So are they parallel? No. Why not? Alternate exterior angles not congruent. And because those are not congruent, those two lines cannot be parallel. All right, what do we have here? An 86 and an 86. So we have alternate interior angles congruent. So if those angles are congruent, can we conclude that this line is parallel to this one? And yes, okay? By the converse of alternate interior angles, okay? How do we know? Because those alternate interior angles are congruent. So the theorem we would use would be the converse of alternate interior angles. All right, is M parallel to N? Let's see, we have consecutive interiors, and so 86 plus 94 equals 180 degrees. So if our consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then is this going to be parallel? How do we know? Well, if we're gonna say the theorem, we're gonna say converse of consecutive interior angles. All right, if x equals 30, is m parallel to n? All right, let's put a 30 in here. So we have 2 times 30 plus 20. So 60, what does this come out to be? 80 degrees. All right, and this angle is 80 degrees. So we have corresponding angles. So are they parallel? Yes. Why? Converse of corresponding angles. Okay, if our corresponding angles are congruent, then those lines must be parallel. All right, so if we've got 50 in here, let's put 50 in here. So it looks like this one's 91. So this is going to be 100 minus 19. What's that? 81. So because these are consecutive interior, consecutive interior, we're looking to see that they equal 180 degrees, that they are supplementary. And I don't believe 91 plus 81 is not 180. So we're going to say no, because consecutive interior angles, not supplementary. Okay, because those angles are not supplementary, there is no way that M can be parallel to N. All right, writing a proof here. When we are writing a proof, you can never use what you're trying to prove to get something congruent. So we're trying to prove the converse of alternate interior angles that it does work. So we can't just say by alternate interior angles, okay? So in here, we've got a statement and reason. So make sure you write your two column proof and you put in statement and reason. And remember, we need to number our stuff here. So number one, we're given angle four is congruent to angle five, and that is given information. Okay, we don't know if those lines are parallel or not yet, but we do know that angle four is congruent to five. 
All right, step two. Do we know that angle one is congruent to angle four? Do we know that for sure? And we do because those are vertical angles. That has nothing to do with if lines are parallel or not, but we do know that one and four are congruent. Now we have something where the fours are tying them together. So can we now say angle one is congruent to angle five? And do you remember what property that is called? That is the transitive. Transitive property of equality. And then now can we say because angle one and five are congruent, can we now say that G must be parallel to H because don't we have the converse of corresponding angles? If corresponding angles are congruent, then can't we now conclude that G is parallel to H? So we can't just right away start by saying four and five are congruent. I mean, we can say they're congruent because it's given, but we can't say by alternate interior angles. We just have to use the given and go about it a different way. All right, then what do we have here? Transitive property of parallel lines. So if J is parallel to K, and K is parallel to M, what can we now conclude about J and M? They're gonna have to be parallel to each other. So if two lines are parallel to the same line, J and M, two lines are parallel to the same line K, then they must be parallel to each other. So if we had a transversal here, we could say angle one, angle two, and angle three are all going to be congruent because they are all corresponding angles. So the transitive property of parallel lines. All right, that about wraps it up for this lesson. Please remember the main point is that we are doing the converse of all the theorems that we did in the last lesson. So converse of alternate interior converse of alternate exterior, converse of corresponding, and converse of consecutive interior. So remember, when you are concluding that you have lines parallel, you are going to have to be using the converse. All right, good luck on your homework.